In today's video, I'm going to give you a full beginner's guide to the Search and Dyes Search and Filter Shopify app. So let's get right into it. The first thing you want to go ahead and do is go to the Shopify app store and then you want to go ahead and find the app here and press install. Now once you press install, it's going to take you to a page that looks something like this and it's going to ask you to grant it access. So just press install and you should be ready to go. So once it's installed, it's going to ask you to do a quick tour. So just press start tour and you can press next through all of these or you can just read through them if you want some help. So the first thing it's going to ask you here is which feature do you need the most? Select which one you want or you can select all of them. It's going to ask for your store category. It's going to ask for your employees and it's going to get you ready to go. So press start and it should open up a page that looks something like this. Now once we're here, I would recommend going to this box here that says quick start. You can press get started here. And this will give you some base information about how to actually install it onto your store. But the brief rundown is basically go to where it says online store on the left hand side. Then you want to go ahead and once it's loaded, press on the customize button. Just like that. And then you're going to want to go over to the little app button here. And you're going to make, want to make sure that it's turned on. So turn this on here, press save, and the app should be ready to go on your website. So the first thing I'd recommend doing now that we've set it up is going to the search and navigation section. And here we can go ahead and edit the instant search widget. So this is going to be the suggestion widget, the main widget really. And down here you can customize what it looks like. So you can have a single column or you can have multi-column. You can turn on legacy colors or you can turn it off. And then down here, you've got some colors that you can customize. So they've got different things here. Or you can press this button here and it's going to basically automatically pull the colors from your Shopify store and put it into here, which is pretty cool. Next up, we've got content. So this is things like how many products are going to get shown. Do you want to show the price? Do you want to show compare at? Do you want to show SKUs? All of that kind of stuff will be here. So you can go ahead and edit this basically to get a look how you want. Next up, we've got the sticky widget section. So you can turn this on or off if you'd like to. And you can look at the conditions and the colors, that kind of stuff. Next up, we have product labels. So we can have labels such as the discount label. So that's going to be a little pop up that looks something like this. You can turn that on if you want to. Same with in stock label here. You can also add custom labels here. And it's going to ask you for the product tag and the text. This is going to be a little bit complicated if you're a beginner. The last thing we can do is some CSS and HTML. So this is just custom stuff here, which again is not going to be very simple for a beginner. So I don't think we'll cover that. So what we want to do is go ahead and press apply changes. And all of the changes we've made have should be applied in 30 seconds. Going down the list, we've got things like suggestions dictionary. So we can go ahead here and add some suggestions. So we can put text in here like this. And this is going to change the priority here. And we can add those and basically those will be suggested when people search it and stuff like that. You can also import them and there's a little help guide here. So just read these here if you want to. Next up we have the search result widget. Again, this is just another customization of how it looks. You've got all of the same, same settings as before. And it's pretty self-explanatory. You can look at it on the site once you're done, see if you like it. We next have preferences, so this is going to be different preferences about things like products. So we've got um, how the widgets work, all of these different bits here. We've got some metadata options, voice search, so that can be an option that we can turn on. Um, we have tons of different settings in here, microcurrency. Next up we've got product fields. So here we'll talk about the search weight, so how important it is for you to have the title there. Obviously the title is a lot more um, important than things like the collections. And next up we have themes. So we can just go ahead and um, make sure it's put into the theme. So if we press that there, it's going to take up, it's going to go onto the page like we did before and it's going to try and get us to turn it on. Obviously we already have it turned on. Next up we've got things like synonyms. So this might be different ways that people would type something in. So you can go ahead and change those if you'd like to. 
And you'd also got stop words here. So first if we look at synonyms, this is things people might, yeah, people might say trousers or pants, or they might say pants or trousers. If you want them to show up, then you might want to add a synonym here. And these are all terms that could be the same. So there's a lot of options there. You could say coat, jacket, jumper, you know, all that kind of stuff. So you'll get a good idea of how to do this. And you could also use ChatGPT for it. Next up, we have the stop words. So easy enough is a stop word, which means it's going to stop um, get, giving you new options once it gets to a specific word. Next up, we've got filters. So people can filter by different things. We can press add filter here. And we can select a parent filter and then we can go ahead and choose some filter parameters if we'd like to. So we can add some values. For example, we could have um, shop by price or something like that. We've also got filters on collections. And then we've got color families. So we can edit all of these different color families if we would like to. Next up, we have merchandising and promo. Press add here. And these are some different merchandising rules. We've got redirects. So if people search one thing, it will re redirect them to the right place. And then we've got banners here. Next up we have sales engines. So this is just an upsell app that they have that you can install if you'd like to. They've also got a cross-sell one and a free shipping bar one. So you can go ahead and add that if you would like to. The next bit, which is quite important, is the integrations. So you might have a page builder, for example, like PageFly. You'll want to integrate it in there, otherwise it's not going to work. But there's tons of other integrations that they've got, like currency converters, um, review apps, all of this kind of stuff that makes it, you know, it adds to the overall experience of it. So you can just turn these on, or you can just go ahead and integrate it depending on the method. So, for example, PageFly, you're going to have to integrate it inside of PageFly itself. So you can go ahead and watch the tutorial here by clicking on that button. You can go ahead and apply changes and we'll move on to the next tab. Next, we have the translation section. So if you have some things that are in a different language, you can go ahead and you can translate it. So you can go do that here. And they've also got some like wrong word stuff in case someone searched something wrong. You can go ahead and do that in there. Lastly, we have the plans and billing. So this is just basically how much it's going to cost. And it ranges from $0 to $329 a month. So go ahead and see which one is right for you. So that's basically a full beginner's guide to search and dies. If you enjoyed the video and found it useful, be sure to like, subscribe and comment down below that it helped. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.